Good evening, Bahamas. This is NB12 broadcasting from Cable 12 Studios on Robinson Road. In news tonight, it's official. Atlantis transferred to Brookfield Asset Management. We have all the details. Another murder recorded after a body was discovered in western New Providence this morning. Opposition leader Perry Christie gets a report card. We'll explain. Those stories and so much more on the way. And the Kia Devone NB12 starts right now. Joining us here at NB12, Brookfield Asset Management is officially the owner of Kersner International's Paradise Island Properties. The Canadian conglomerate cancelled the deal to take over the Atlantis Resort and one and only Ocean Club earlier this year after senior lenders took legal action. Today, Prime Minister Hubert Ingram revealed in a press statement that Kersner International has successfully completed its global restructuring process. During a news conference this afternoon, President of Kersner International Bahamas, George Marcantonis, said this means that all of Kersner's Paradise Island assets have been transferred to Brookfield in exchange for Kersner being released from $175 million debt owed to that lender. Obviously that this saga that's been going on with our debt restructuring is over and we are now moving forward. Brookfield are the new owners of the real estate for these properties here in the Bahamas. Kersner International continues as the management team. There are three key factors to the government's approval of uh, this deal. The first one was that there will be no loss of jobs as a result of the transaction. The second, that annual capital expenditures will continue to be in the same range as they've been over the past four or five years, which is about $50 million a year. And the third being that we would continue to market and advertise these properties as we've done in the past. The government granted the requisite approvals for the restructuring transaction after being satisfied that Kersner's syndicate of lenders agreed with it. Tourism Minister Vincent Vanderpool Wallace warned there will be repercussions if Brookfield does not stick to those conditions. However, he says this finalized deal is good news for the Bahamas. With business looking, uh, business prospects looking pretty good and the current management uh, continuing in place, um, it gives us a great feeling in the Bahamas that uh, we're going to continue to see a complete rebound of our business that we've all been looking forward to as already started and with the team of people who have been affecting that. So um, all around very good news for us um, uh, because the obviously the one concern that everybody had was having new players coming in that we are not familiar with in terms of what their philosophy is but we know what the philosophy of the people who are here today and we are delighted to have that remain in place for the future. Officials assured the public that existing workers would continue to be employed by Brookfield. Kersner will continue to manage Atlantis Paradise Island for three to six years and the one and only Ocean Club for at least 15 years. Mark Antona says they're required to meet certain criteria which he considers to be very reasonable. They have been built around what our performance hurdles have been in the past. They're not something new or unusual. It, it would be silly to put criteria that have not been seen historically, at least here, because uh, not only Kersner, but anyone who might have followed Kersner would be able to reach them. I mean, you know, it's not going to be miracle workers. So I'm very comfortable, as my management team is, that we can achieve them. And that's day-to-day -day business. I mean, that is the business world. Obviously, we can't speak for a, a, a Lehman Brothers disaster or some <laughs> other economic issue that may occur, but... Uh, we're looking to the future now. The murder count climbed to 41 this morning after police discovered a body in bushes off Coral Harbor Road. Our Jasmine Bonamy was on the scene and filed this report. Police say they found the man's body in bushes just beyond this track road, and they say it was badly decomposed. 
According to police, the man's body was found about 100 feet from the busy roadway near the water and sewage well fields. His body was lying on the side of a track road just off Coral Harbor Road. That dirt road is commonly used by water and sewage workers. But it was reportedly area residents who alerted police to the badly decomposed body after they began smelling a foul odor in recent days. Police press liaison officer Inspector Chrislyn Skippings says that discovery was made early this morning. Sometime around 7.40 a.m. on Friday, the 27th of April, 2012, police received information that a body was found through a track road off the airport road. Police responded and discovered the partially decomposed body of a male wearing a khaki blue pants and a khaki blue shirt just off, just to a track road off the airport road leading to Coral Harbor. At present, Skipping says the body was so badly decomposed that it was hard to determine the age and identity of the victim or what killed him. But she did say that police suspect foul play. She adds that investigators will be better able to determine what happened on that isolated track road once an autopsy is completed. When our news team was at the scene this morning, a strong odor permeated the air. The smell of that decomposing body was so strong that investigators had to use face masks like this one to load it into a van. Skipping says police suspect the body had been there for several days. While police are labeling this latest discovery a murder, they are not saying much else, except that they need the public's assistance as they have few clues in the case. At present, we are uncertain of the circumstances surrounding this particular incident, and so we are appealing to members of the public who may have any information regarding this incident to kindly give us a call. Additionally, anyone who may have not seen a family member in a few days, we're asking you to also give us a call at 919 or 322-3333, or you can contact the Central Detective Unit at 502-9991, or you can contact Crime Stoppers at 328-TIPS. Police also plan to search its missing persons database to help identify this most recent murder victim. Reporting for NB12, I'm Jasmine Bonamy. A 20-year-old man and a juvenile will now have to prove that they had nothing to do with their alleged victim's death. The accused were brought before a magistrate this afternoon to face separate murder charges. Charisma Robinson reports. A 17-year-old juvenile was today charged in a magistrate's court with the murder of 25-year-old Darren Carroll. The Englishton resident was killed in a drive-by shooting on April 5th. Police believe the teenage boy opened fire on Carroll as he was waiting on a friend outside a home in Yellow Elder Gardens. On Thursday, four men believed to be Carroll's brothers were charged with shooting a man at Carroll's recent graveside service at Lakeview Cemetery. Meantime, the juvenile charged with Carroll's murder was not required to enter a plea when he appeared before Chief Magistrate Roger Gomez. His attorney, Ian Cargo, claimed that police did not call the teenager's parents while he was in custody. Instead, they allegedly called a pastor who then interrogated him. Cargo further claimed that before his client was severely beaten, a plastic bag was placed over his head. Chief Magistrate Gomez made note of the attorney's claims. Meantime, a 20-year-old man of Yellow Elder Gardens also appeared in court today to face a murder charge. Clarence Smith was charged with the shooting death of 31-year-old Ginacchio Knowles. The victim was shot to death on April 17th at an establishment on Lightburn Avenue off Farrington Road. Smith was not required to enter a plea to the murder charge. His attorney, Ramona Farguson, claimed that her client was severely beaten while in police custody and that he was also forced to take part in an interview. Both Smith and the juvenile were remanded to a Majesty's prison. Smith will return to court on June 25th when he will be served with a voluntary bill of indictment. The juvenile will return to court on July 5th when he will also be served with a voluntary bill of indictment. Reporting for MB12, I'm Charisma Robinson.